going to count to three, and if you could just indulge me in this and just give me a big woosa. One, two, three, woosa. That had nothing to do with anything. I just needed to set the stage that I'm taking some risk. In 2011, I had an opportunity uh, with my family to move here to Vintic, Namibia from Los Angeles, California. And, and we had no clue what we were going to be getting into. We just knew we were taking over a church. We were taking over a local NGO, a local organization. And everyone was afraid for us. Everyone was scared for us. They asked questions. What are you going to eat? Where will you live? Will you be living in huts? You know, there's lions and tigers and bears. And I said, wait a minute, that's a song. Google it. Jasmine Sullivan sang that song, Lion, Tigers, and Bears. I never saw a tiger or a bear here in Africa, but I've seen a lot of lions. But nonetheless, we took the risk. We moved when everyone else was looking at us kind of strange, and we moved here to Vintuk, Namibia. My wife at the time was four months pregnant, and my son was a year and a half, and we moved here not knowing what was going to, to happen, what was going to take place, but we did it anyway. So what if I told you the greatest mistake you would ever make is the risk you don't take. Companies take risk all the time, but what about us normal people, us normal folk who have a lot to lose, but yet so much to gain? Being comfortable is dying and taking risk is living. If you want to die, just be comfortable. But if you want to live, I challenge you to take some risk. Take some risk. One of the greatest poets of our time, Tupac Shakur, made this statement. Yes, I did say Tupac. <laughs> he made this statement. He said, I'm a reflection of the community. Are we being trained? Are we being trained by a community that simply wants to develop us to be normal, to never take any risk? What, what would our communities be like? What, what would life be like if we just took some risk? If you want to become a legend, you need to learn how to become a risk taker. If I was to ask you if you knew the disciple Thaddeus, you probably would say, I don't know who that is. And maybe if I asked you if you knew the disciple Bartholomew, you probably don't know who that is either. But if I asked you if you knew the disciple Peter, some of us would agree. Some of us would say, yeah, I know who that is because he got out of the boat and he walked on water. Now, I'm not here to debate whether that story is true or not, but just the simple fact that it's a story inspires so many because no one looks at the people who are in the boat. Everyone looks at the people who got out of the boat. So risk takers become legends because they challenge norms. They challenge normalcy. And that's what Peter did. He challenged normalcy. And so that's what we have to do to become, become legends. We've got to learn how to challenge the norms. And what was happening is, is that society is creating people who are just, just being normal and just relaxing and just doing normal everyday life. But we've got to learn how to challenge the status quo. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. What would our communities be like if we collectively yet individually challenged normalcy? Maybe it's just that we're, we're, we're maintaining what we've already accomplished just to show off our trophies and never get back out there and win again. Maybe it's time for us to step out and take some risk. One of the greatest risk takers that I know is my mom, Viola Amy. I hope you would say, aw, on that mom, aw. <laughs> But one of the greatest risk takers I know is my mom, Viola Amy. In 1970, she was an amazing hairdresser with a booming clientele in Los Angeles. And, and she already had my brother in the 70s, and, and I was born in 1983. Yes, I know I look really younger than I really am, but it's okay. But she, she, she had us, and she decided in 1982 to give up all of her dreams, to give up her goals, to give up her desires, to come home and raise us. She decided to give up everything to teach me and my brother how to dream, how to obtain our goals, how to fulfill our desires. And so we got to a certain age. My, my brother was in college and I was in about grade eight and she decided to take a computer class. She took the computer class. She did kind of well. And then she uh, decided to register for the, the local junior college. And she went to junior college and she took a class and she got an A in it. And she realized I'm kind of smart. And so she kept taking class after class after class, and, and then she graduated. And this is her on her graduation day from junior college. 
really what I want to show you is look at her shoes. <laughs> Who at that age graduates wearing multicolored Nike Air Force Ones? My mother. And I talked her into doing that. But at the age of 60, she did the biggest thing, the biggest risk. She took the biggest risk at the age of 60. She decided to now take the AA degree and transfer to a normal, large university called UCLA. And at the age of 60, she had an opportunity to move into the dormitories for one week. And so I can remember that day that my mom and my brother, my dad, my wife, we all went with her to the dormitory because she was moving in for one week. And we were sitting there like, Mom, you're 60. These guys are 22 and 23, 24. What are you going to do? Are you going to the club? Are you going to turn up? Are you going to pop some bottles? I could only imagine. Could you imagine seeing her 60 in the club? Hey, girl, you know, what are, what are you going to do, Mama? You're 60. But she did it anyway. And here she is, a week away from her husband and a week away from her family in, in the dormitories. And <clears throat> she's with a 23-year-old and her and is a roommate. And the amazing thing about this story is she got into UCLA, but her roommate didn't. And at the age of 63, she graduated from UCLA with her Bachelor of Arts degree in Women's Studies. What my mom teaches me is this. Risk requires passion, and passion is fueled by expectation. An expectation that if I just dare to do something that no one else is doing, I might just get some results that no one else is getting. It's a great statement. A legend's life carries on after they die. And that, that kind of statement always plagues me. How does that happen? How, do they, how does their legacy continue on even after they've passed away, even after he or she has, has passed away? How, does they, how do their legend keep going on? Because the stories of their risk live on. My mom's story will constantly be living long after she's here because she decided to take a risk. Society... And even our very own communities are, are, are developing people who are, who are living frustrated lives, who are living reactive lives, who are having horrible relationships with family and friends, who are really just frustrated with everything, living lives that aren't being fulfilled because of a disease I call comfort, a.k.a. normal. So maybe let's, let's just abandon average. Let's challenge the status quo. Maybe let's resist mediocrity and rekindle those passions. A lot of us have a lot of things that we can do in our lives, and sometimes we can look back and say, man, I wish I had taken that opportunity. Man, I wish I had, had launched out into the deep and did something that no one else is doing. When, when, when the concern of people's opinions and perceptions outweigh the need to be different, then mediocrity will be in Inevitable. Someone once asked me, hey, Mike, and I said, yeah, how are you able to be so relevant in the United States, but yet so relevant where you live in Namibia? And my response was simple. I take risk. Taking risk is about launching out into the deep. Taking risk is about launching out into the area of the unknown where you don't know where this is going to come from and how this is going to work out. But you know that there's a greater calling, something for me to do, something for me to accomplish. So I've got to launch out into the deep and act on what it is that I believe. That's what taking risk is, is all about. In 2013, I took the biggest risk of my life. I got a phone call, and the phone call was from the States, and it was the president of our church back in the States, and they said to us, hey, uh, we're shutting down the NGO there, shutting down the organization and everything. You can pack up all your stuff. We'll move it for your charge back to the States, and you can come home and, 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 and relive there. And in a split second, my wife and I made a decision that we really didn't, I don't even think we really talked about it and had a long conversation. We just made a split second decision, we're going to stay because we're home. We felt like this was home. We decided, you know what, we're going to stay. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to abandon being average. We're going to abandon the mediocrity and going back to what we know is comfortable and take a risk and step out and do something that no one else maybe not want to do. 
We're going to step out and start a brand new NGO and start a brand new organization to bring fresh life into church and different things. And we're going to do all this different stuff. And we have no clue if anybody's going to agree with us. Anybody's going to be there supporting with us. We don't know how we're going to get paid. We don't know where we're going to live. How are we going to be able to pay for the house? Anybody feel like that sometimes? We just don't know. We just don't know. But risk takers say, I don't care what I don't know. I'm just going to step out and do what I feel I'm being led to do. And that's what we did. We took the risk. And my dad always says this, nothing ventured is nothing gained. And because we took that venture, because we stepped out, we gained more family than we ever had. We gained more, more sense of responsibility than we ever had. We gained, we gained more sense of fulfillment because we were stepping out, doing something that no one else was willing to do. Let me introduce you to a local mom here in Namibia. Her name is Nathalie Shimi, and she had three sons, and she raised her three sons, and she sent them off to college. Two of them went to college in the States, and one went to college here, and, and she raised them well, and she sent them off and took care of them and made sure they got through school, and they got into their own, uh, their own companies and launched their own businesses. Matter of fact, one of them is the CEO of the Sandlam Company here in, in Ventook, and and she took care of them, and then she got them to where they were at, got them to their best point, and then she said, it's my time. And she went and she enrolled at Polytechnic of Namibia. And at the age of 61, she graduated from there as well with her master's in marketing. Something that she said that really struck me in her article is that some people challenged her you know, going to, to university is really for someone who's a lot younger. You, you don't really need to go at that age. But she said, hey, look, I've done work here. I've led this, this country and I've, I've, I've fought with this country to make sure that we've got freedom. And I want to make sure that I get my own education and I, I begin to pave new ways and new things for, for all of the people here in Namibia. Taking risk helps others. There's other stories of Toivo y Toivo who, who even though he was locked away in Robben Island, he couldn't, you couldn't quench the passion that he had to see a free Namibia. He wouldn't give up until he saw what it is that he wanted. We have stories of the founding father, Sam Nioma, who casted the vision 2030. Even knowing that, hey, look, I might not be in office to see the vision come to pass, but I'm willing to pass the baton on to other leaders and to other men and women to take the charge to see a vision come to pass for this nation. Risk taking is about stepping out and doing something you might never see. The greatest innovators in our world, the greatest innovators of our time, all have one thing in common. They took risk. They took risk. So maybe let's stop playing it safe. Let's take some key calculated risks that will prove beneficial to other people. Because the risk that we take actually stirs up greatness in others. When you begin to take risk, other people are stirred up to maybe let me step out and take some type of risk. You're going to be hearing from 16 people today who are going to take risk. They're going to step out of that door. They're going to walk onto this red dot like I'm doing right now, and they're going to talk to you hoping that you will listen. But we're all here to take risk, and risk stirs up greatness in others. Once you decide to take that risk... Once you decide to step through that door, once you decide to launch out into the deep, you have just reached the point of no return. And when you reach the point of no return, all fear goes out of the window and you're either going to sink or you're going to swim. And I choose to swim. Whether it's going to be the front stroke, the back stroke, the breast stroke, the butterfly, whatever it is, I'm going to swim because I refuse to become a failure. I refuse to become a failure. I'm going to take risk. The risk we take today are for the legends we will become tomorrow. Thank you.